Welcome to the Business of Being Healthy, where we are passionate about treating our health as good as we treat our wealth. Shelly Bryan here, and I am obsessed with sharing real life experiences and wisdom to help save you time, heartache, and money as you continue to grow personally and professionally. Twice a week, we push aside that BS to take massive intentional action. And I promise by tuning in, you will receive the straightforward talk you've been waiting for, filled with actionable steps that will inspire you to achieve the health and wealth you desire while you are building your empire. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of the Business of Being Healthy. I am so grateful for today's guest because I feel like we were maybe doing a little Instagram stalking on each other, but it's one of those things that you just got to step into the room. And I love that Jess reached out to me originally. I was able to be on her podcast and now I am like so excited to have her here on the business of being healthy because when you find those people that you just connect with and the stories and you're like, oh my gosh, that happened to me too. Yes. And you don't feel alone. I feel like Jess is going to bring that power, that personability today, and honestly is going to talk about some great things that you can do for your business and just getting through some tough times. We've been there, but please welcome me, uh, Jess Bergio who is a self-proclaimed hype girl whose passion is helping you connect with your voice to your brand to truly build the confidence that you need to chase your dreams. Now, she is a former beauty entrepreneur of 22 years. You think she has some stories in that, 22 years? And founder and host of her own show, Unscripted, the podcast. She's a business mentor, an author, a podcast coach, which I can't wait to get into, and a mama who helps female entrepreneurs build the confidence they need to connect to themselves on a deeper level in order to create a strong personal brand. Jess, welcome to the show. So excited to have you here. So excited to be here. And you're right. I think we did do like a little Instagram, like stockish and try to figure out like, oh, she looks like she's into the same things as me. And I just learned to lean into that. Like if there's somebody that I'm curious about, I'm like, send a message, send a voice note, like just try to connect, whether it's long Long term, whether it's just in a quick moment of like, I see you. Um, I've noticed that if I do that, it pays off in ways that I would have never expected, meaning you have an insightful conversation or you get to connect with someone for just a brief moment. But in our case, we got to see each other in real life that same week at a podcast recording with some of our mentors. And now mm-hmm. here we are recording another podcast. So it's so fun. It's fun though. But I feel like once the introduction happens, like then it's like, okay, the universe, God, like just starts making it all happen. Like, okay, you two want to connect. Here you go. Here you go. I'll make it happen. And so it's just so great to have you here. And, and I'm so excited for this conversation. And before like, well, let's just dive in as we dive in here, tell me a little bit about this 22 years experience in the beauty industry, because that's no joke. And I can't wait to like, kind of pull some nuggets of wisdom from there. Yeah. It it sounds like such a long time and I guess it has been. And I look back at that whole career I've had and think, you know, where did the time go and how did I end up here? You know, because at this age, I'm 42 now, 22 years, I I decided to go to beauty school when I was in high school. So my uh, junior year of high school, one of my girlfriends was like, Hey, we should sign up for beauty school. And I was like, mm, okay. Like I knew it was non-committal. I knew at the time I didn't have to like make a decision. And you know, at 17, you have no idea what you want to do. You know what you're interested in, but her and I both worked at the salon part-time for, you know, a little cash on the side type of a job. And I think she was hell bent that, that was going to be her career. No if, ands or buts about it. And she, she's still in the industry too. Um, but I wasn't quite so sure. And I came from a background of like, that's not looked at as a real job. And so I had everything stacked against me when it came to making that a real career. So I convinced myself early on that this is what I'll do until I figure out what I really want to do with my life. So I know a lot of people can relate to that when they get into jobs or they get into careers or they decide at 18 years old what they want to go to college for. And I knew enough at that time to give myself at least that that grace to say, Hey, let me try. Let me do what I feel like I want to do right now. And then if the course shifts down the road, like I'll, I'll lean into that and, and move with it. And so it's not to say that, you know, the first couple of years I wasn't thinking, Oh gosh, my mom was right. I probably should have went to college. I should have, should have, should have. Um, but I, I got really lucky in the, in that she, 
had the wherewithal to tell me, listen, if you're going to choose this type of career, why don't you go try to work at the best salon in San Diego? Why don't you really make a go of this? Like, don't stay. We're kind of in a small town here in San Diego. That's where I grew up. She said, get out of the box that you've been in, you know, your whole upbringing. <laughs> yeah, that I put you in. But <laughs> go out and see what really goes on at these big salons. Like, go to the high level places. Like, if you're going to do it, do it right. And so that was probably the best piece of advice that I could have ever taken with me. And I still, to this day, you know, if I want to do something or if I want to learn something, I try to go find the person who's doing it at the highest level so that I can learn from them. Um, and that, that paid me off huge in, in the end, because I had great mentors who took their careers very seriously and who really just showed up at a, as a high level hairdresser that I didn't even know really existed. And it was getting a job at that very first salon that I knew I had found my people. These were really wild creatives who dressed however they wanted. They did their hair how they wanted. They wore loud makeup. And I just was like, this is a place where everybody kind of gets to be themselves and whatever that looks like. So it was a perfect place to kind of discover who I was and also make other people feel beautiful. I realized quickly how important, you know, a style is for somebody. I grew up with crazy curly frizzy hair. So it was always challenging for me to feel comfortable in my body let alone with this wild hair I had that my mom didn't know how to help me tame, right? I look back at pictures of my childhood. And I'm like, it is no wonder I became a hairdresser. So <laughs> all that to say, I, um, I left early on with a couple who opened their own salon and it was my first journey of like experiencing someone else going through entrepreneurship and realizing quickly that it's no joke and realizing all of the things that I watched them do kind of backwards not the right way, not seeing things through. And I learned so many lessons that I didn't even at the time realize I was learning, but mm -hmm. it built such a strong foundation for me to at least know what not to do when it came to leadership, leading myself, following through with things, taking care of my body, taking care of my mental health, um, having boundaries around how I was showing up at work, what I was saying yes and no to. And, you know, through those first couple of years in the industry, I went all in, like I was a full-time hairdresser, we would work nine to nine, five, six days a week. And I had no balance. I had no boundaries and it ate away at other parts of my life. And looking back, like I worked away my twenties, I worked away all of the times that I watched my friends in college, having fun and doing all those things. <clears throat> and so, you know, in, in hindsight, I have a lot of things I wish I could have done differently. And during COVID and, and kind of before that, um, I started to think, wouldn't it be cool if I could create some sort of mentorship or coaching to help people getting into the industry that do also want to take it seriously, who want to make six figures in the industry, who want to have boundaries and have, you know, rituals around having this career be something that they can do for a really long time. I watched a lot of people burn out after six, seven, eight years, um, having either pain issues, physical issues, mental issues around like, you know, it being too much, the anxiety started to set in weird things happening that just wasn't happening to me. And so I started to peel back the layers of like, what was I doing differently? How was I showing up differently to support myself? And, um, that's when I joined my first business mastermind in early 2018 to kind of figure out how to put a framework together for a course or a program or some sort of mentorship. Like I had no real idea on how to do that. And so that's where I joined Chris Harder's, uh, fast foundations mastermind and Lori Harder had been like a fitness mentor of mine for years and years. And I had been introduced to personal development several years before that. And, you know, through the discovery of all that on the in the mastermind, I realized like it might be time for me to explore other ways to help people, not just in the physical form of, you know, doing hair, but how could I help more people on a deeper level? So it's been a journey the last four years into my own new entrepreneurship, because I do feel like I didn't realize I was stepping into entrepreneurship as a, as a person in the beauty industry, I did quickly realize through all of the years that that's yes, what I was doing. And Chris coined the phrase accidental entrepreneur that had really stuck with me and was like kind of the key selling piece of why I joined that mastermind. Because I was like, how many people are actually accidental entrepreneurs in the beauty industry? So many of us, a lot of us choose the career for different reasons. Like I want to make my own schedule. I want to have freedom of this, that, whatever. Really, that's the true basis of wanting to be an entrepreneur. Um, the skill set of entrepreneurship is much different. You can want that all day long, but are you capable of running your own business at the level of which, you know, you, you should. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so it's taken a lot of practice to see where I can really help people um, show up for themselves to do all those things. So I created my first course called the six figure stylist. That was really a mindset course around helping people step into these things, which are my favorite to talk about the mindset, the boundaries, the non-negotiables building in habits that are going to support you. And once I coached, you know, a few cohorts of that, I quickly realized that this would be so good for anybody who is an entrepreneur, not just in the beauty industry. So that's where I started to expand my reach and so on and so forth. So that's what, that's what carried me through, but 22 years, you know, is a long time. And through that, I had my son about 10 years in. And so your priorities and, and things start to shift and change. Mm -hmm. And we can probably dive into that, but you know, I just knew that it was such a great foundation for me. I had built the book of business. I was very proud of, and it grew with me as I grew and it allowed me a lot of freedoms to explore other things during that time. I became a personal trainer and also did that for 10 years. I dove into makeup when I started getting asked to do onset stuff for magazines and traveling for photo shoots. Um, so just pushing myself to always expand what I was able to serve my clients with because I still use that same client base for the makeup and for the personal training. So it's, it's funny when you, when you learn people, how you can start to create things um, that let you up, but then also can serve your clients. Yeah, no, I love this. And it's, I feel like every story it's, it's truly like a journey, right? Like, you know, you hear seasons, you hear different things like out there in the world, but it's like a journey and it's just taking that next step. And sometimes we don't know what that next step looks like, but it's like, you just started recognizing different opportunities and we're like, I'm going to go test, test this out. Does this feel good? Am I going to keep going? But one thing that I think I want to dive in real quick that you said, because I think that this could have been something that's, I, I don't want to say overlooked, but had such an incredible power is when you said, I walked into this salon and I saw everybody in their wild hair and their, you know, uh, intense makeup, let's say, and their style. And you were like, these are all people that are just being themselves. How powerful could that be at that age to see all these people just be them and not be like something that they're not supposed to be? Because I feel like with social media and with everything out there, we have all these stigmas, right? We're supposed to look a certain way. We're supposed to talk a certain way. We're supposed to drive this car, wear this, all this. And you at a very young age had this like view of like, these are stylists that really don't give an F and they are just being them. D did that impact just how you've been able to develop as a professional, right? As an entrepreneur, as a professional, having that basis, because that can be crippling if you start, start that comparing. Yeah, no, it's so true. And I think, like I said, in hindsight, I don't, I didn't realize the direct effect it was having on me at the time. I just, I quickly learned that it's okay to be yourself. And I think we all had to wear black. So that was one of the differentiators in that salon. And it was interesting how people could be so different with their outfits when we all had to wear black. And so it forced mm. people to do things that maybe they wouldn't normally take as much time to do, like their makeup, like their hair, like the shoes, like the jewelry they were wearing. It was like there, there were small ways we could be creatively different in that space. And as I progressed and moved into different salons, I was influenced by different people's fashion and the style that people would bring. And one of my mentors said to me, you know, our clients look to us for what's trending and what, what is fashionable. They want to see how you're wearing your hair. They want to see what kind of makeup you're wearing, what clothes you're wearing. And so it really pushed me to always pay attention to, to my true, like, what did I want to, how did I want to show up that day? And often I would base it around what type of clients I had that day. Did I have younger fun clients that I could get away with like a funkier look? Did I have an older sophisticated client coming in that day that maybe I wanted to just, I don't know, cover up a little bit more or put the blazer on for that day. It all de was a dependent on my mood. And that was the coolest thing when I moved into a salon where I could wear whatever I wanted was getting the opportunity to decide how I felt that day. How do mm. I want to show up today? And I've always said like, that's one of the coolest things about um, this industry is that self-expression piece. And it's carried with me well into social media and online presence because the biggest feedback I get is we love how authentic you are. You're very authentically mm -hmm. yourself. It comes naturally to you. And if I look back, right, we can't connect the dots looking forward, only kind of looking back. I can see that I'd been practicing that for a really long time, unintentionally knowing that that's what I was doing. And so you know, I think through fashion expression of like makeup and hair, I mean, my hair has been every single color you could think of. And I didn't do it based on what I thought other people wanted 
wanted me to have. In fact, it was probably the opposite. Um, random piercings on my face and all the tattoos I have covering my body. Like those are ways of self-expression that I think you, you do. And luckily, you know, my mom was, you know, she's a little judgmental and a little bit, my mom's a little prim and proper. And she, she's still always accepted me for who I was and encouraged me to still show up and chase my dreams and be myself. And so I think at least growing up in that environment, then being raised in a work environment where that was also, you know, deeply encouraged, um, it allowed for me to do the same with my clients. And so, yeah, I think, like you said, it's, it was really cool to, um, look at that now that you've said that and, and think about it in that way, it was super impactful. I mean, cause I had the opposite upbringing, right? I grew up in a, a financial institution and then went on to pharmaceuticals, right? So suits and suits where like being able to express yourself. I remember I had like, I had gotten some like little red, like highlights added yep. in and not just like Auburn red, like red. And I swear everyone in the office, like looked at me, like I had five eyes. And so it was one of those things I was like, oh my gosh, but part of me, which I think you share, I was like, screw you. Like, I'm just going to be me. But that was like my bit of self-expression wearing a suit in these, yep. in these. So I love that you had that opportunity. And I think that's something that, you know, as parents, as moms, and as we build businesses and like bring on teams, that it's something that we can't lose sight of. We cannot lose sight of a letting people be themselves because that's where all the magic happens. If they conform to be like leaders, like leaders, like their leader, we're just repeating ourselves and, mm -hmm. and we're missing out on all the special that they can bring. And so I just love that you had that opportunity um, to do that. And it's like, as a mom, as a leader, I'm like, dang, that's so great that I want to make sure that I'm cultivating that not only in my family, but in my teams that I'm building. So one thing too, that I, I want to dive into here, because I mean, there's literally, I, your, your opening was so great because there was so much that I could uh, pull from, but you know, you just said, how do I want to show up for my clients? Like, how do I want to show up? And this is something that I have talked about. And I think it's incredibly important when it comes to your health. How do I want to show up? Um, I've talked about this on social media within the podcast as well, earlier episodes is like, you're a walking billboard, right? Should you be self-conscious of that? No, you should beam and radiate who you are. So how has health, because you went into uh, personal training as well, and you had mentioned like Chris Harder and then Lori, of course, obviously icon in the health industry, how has health been able to like your health been able to almost like spruce up your billboard, right? As you're mm. building your, your business. Yeah. Great question. It's everything, my health and the health of those in my family and around me, like that's literally the foundation to everything that's I've ever created, been able to sustain, you name it. I, I prioritize that above all else. Mm. Um, if my health is not in order, nothing else matters. I don't care how much money is in the bank. I don't care how many clients I have. I don't care what level of success you have. If you don't feel good physically and mentally and spiritually, like it's all for nothing. It's that simple. And that is rooted to my core. It came from my grandparents I raised us pretty healthy. We grew up, you know, with very limited amounts of sugar. And once I started to explore what those types of things would do to my body, it was then my choice to, are you going to poison yourself? And sure I did all through high school when there's vending machines, I smoked cigarettes for 13 years. I dabbled and tried different various drugs as I was growing up, like, because everybody else was doing it. And I quickly and luckily realized my body didn't like it. My, I'm very sensitive to alcohol. I'm very sensitive to sugar, very sensitive to a lot of things. And so you get a choice. How do you want to feel? Do you want to feel like you're constantly recovering or do you want to feel at your absolute best? And as a creative, as an entrepreneur, I can't show up half ass and expect mm. to have amazing results. And so at some point you have to take personal responsibility of your own health, no matter what environment you're in. Does it help when your environment supports what you want to do? Absolutely. And so if you have any control over the environment that you're in, that's the first thing you have to start with because you are usually only as strong as your environment. And so creating environments in which I can thrive has always been a key piece to my success for sure. I love that. And I love how you said creating your environments. I think sometimes we can feel like things are out of control, right? In a position that I held when I was in corporate America, I traveled 70% of the time, seven zero. I was on a plane every week, if not twice a week. And at that very same time, I was doing a fitness competition, 
right? So I could have very well said, it's out of my control, 70%, screw the fitness competition, I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. But it was what was in my control. And so the fact that you looked at your environment and being able to control it, I think has made all the difference. Do you have any advice for someone that might feel out of control, right? Like that might not be able to like wants to get healthy, wants to feel what you just explained, doesn't know where to get started. How would you help yeah. guide that entrepreneur? It can feel overwhelming if you do feel like bits of this are, are out of your control and you've not taken personal responsibility for it. I mean, any time that we're having conflict internally, it's a personal choice. It's a perspective shift that needs to happen. And until you're ready to make that shift and change, it won't happen. Someone can give you the best piece of advice. Someone can give you the exact blueprint. We can tell you exactly what to do, but until you make a decision, it's like, I refer to like alcoholics until you decide to get help, not no program, no course, no 30 day, 60 day, nothing will work. It just won't. And so until you sit down and start to dream forecast, what you want your life to look like, to feel like Will it then become something that you can start to get a glimpse of what could be? And that will and that desire to chase that has to be greater than your willingness to play victim to your circumstances. And that's why I call myself a tough love hype girl, because I will hype you all day and hold you accountable like nobody else. But I do that through tough love because the coddling piece and the really, I can be empathetic to a certain standard. We all, we need to do that internally and we do need to have people like that. But when you hire a coach or a mentor or a trainer or somebody in your life, that's not their role. You know, your friend maybe plays that role. Maybe your mom plays that role or someone close to you, but people in your life that really can create like sustainable change to snap you out of what you've been doing over and over again, the patterns that you've been repeating in order to have the current state that you're in, they're not going to be able to help you. You need someone without that emotional attachment to your stories to help you get out of your own way. And we are always the only thing in our own way. And it's hard to hear sometimes. And we can say, but, 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 and yeah, a lot of that might be circumstantial and you might've been dealt some really shitty cards, but at the end of the day, like we are still personally responsible for the food we put in our mouth, the things we say yes to the shit we listen to the people we surround ourselves with, you are not forced to do anything. So you know, and, and take all that with a grain of salt because we all, I don't know everyone's circumstances and nor am I, you know, a doctor or I don't know, you know, I don't have a background in mental health. So we all have the shit we're working from, but the advice piece I will give you is if you have a goal or a vision, create a plan of action from that, right? Make small steps to help you do one thing a day. That's going to get you closer to that. Consistency to me is the equivalent of just not quitting. I made a post about that today on social media that maybe you're in not hot girl season. Maybe you're in don't give up season. And that can look like don't give up on yourself. Maybe and we'll use your story of don't give up on yourself just because you're traveling. How can you set yourself up to win when you travel? Can you pack healthy snacks? Can you make sure you have time to eat? Can you at least drink water instead of ordering a soda? Can you make sure you don't drink alcohol during the week if you know you really need to be on? There are little things that you can support yourself in day in and day out. They're going to help you make A, that decision, but also other decisions once you start to build that level of self-trust because you are doing the things you really want to be doing. Mm -hmm. Self-trust to me equals confidence. You start to build on your confidence when you trust yourself. Trust yourself to show up for yourself. Trust yourself to do the things you say you want to do. Because at the end of the day, nobody really cares if you're 20 pounds overweight. Nobody really cares if you don't feel good. Nobody really cares if you aren't optimally, you know, at your best at work. Only you know. Only you know you're not living up to your fullest potential or doing the things that you know you could be capable of. That's why you feel overwhelmed. That's why you feel guilt or shame or anxiety because you know better. And when we know better, what do we do? We got to do better. I, I absolutely love that. And I'm going to piggyback off that for one second because the self-trust thing is something that I've talked about a lot um, with my previous coaching clients and just on the podcast, social media is if you say to yourself that you're going to you know, run 20 minutes, or let's say I'm going to eat breakfast every day this week and Monday comes along and you're late because you didn't plan ahead or what have you. So you don't eat breakfast that chips away at your subconscious. And then Tuesday comes around you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then you know what? The dog threw up in the morning. And so now you don't have breakfast again, a little chip again, 
all those little chips, like you are breaking the word to the most important person yourself. And so if there is any advice that I could give to this one topic is don't like keep the word to yourself. If anything, I would rather, I would coach someone to break their word with someone else than with themselves. It is more important to focus on yourself and show up every day. And you know, one, one tool I'll always recommend is Ed Milet's um, book, The Power of One More. Focus on one day at a time. Just do it one day and then get up the next day, do it one more day. You make it small and you will build up that self-trust, which like you said, is that confidence. It's so powerful when it comes to your business. If it's making those five extra sales calls, make the damn five sales calls. Don't go to bed at night before you do it. Even if you leave yeah. messages, you got to do it. Cause that way you just prove to yourself what you can do. Totally. And sometimes it does have to look a little half-assed in the beginning to just get started. You know, maybe you haven't been to the gym in a while. We use an easy analogy, like just go and show up and walk on the treadmill and go stretch in the corner, like start easy, get yourself comfortable with a new surrounding. If it is something new to you or something you haven't done in a really long time, it's going to take a minute, right? Feeling like a beginner sucks. We all know it sucks. It sucks. Starting <laughs> It does suck, you know, like starting over after 22 years in the industry, like, I'm not going to lie. These last couple of years have freaking sucked and I've questioned everything. And I question myself almost every day throughout the whole day. I'm constantly like, just go get a job. Just go back, back to the salon. We all have this old ticker tape that just repeats in our head. It, you're not, not normal if this is happening to you too. And we can find so many ways to talk ourselves out of shit. It's unreal, right? Like I would... I call myself like a really, um, high level procrastinator. Like I get so much shit done when I'm procrastinating, right? Like I know I have to do two podcasts today and I will go do laundry, wash the floors, clean the windows, drive to the grocery store, pack for next week's trip, but I won't record the podcast. Like I needed to do one thing that would have taken 30 minutes, but instead I did something for four hours that nobody else cares if my house is clean. <laughs> like, you know, so look at the things that you're doing. Are you being a really you know, I don't know what the right word would be, but like, if you find yourself procrastinating, doing other things that you want to tell yourself are more important, take what she just said and, and let somebody else down for a minute and do the one thing that, you know, you need to do in order to make everything else in your life easier. There's another book called the one thing that's also really good. And it really helps you pick that one thing based off your now priorities and that's where boundaries and, and habits come into play because I'm sure like, you know, Shelly, you too, there's so many things now that maybe used to be more challenging that now are just a part of your daily habits. Like you don't even think about not doing them. They just get done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this morning for me, I didn't get to do a workout and my whole morning. I was like thinking like, what, 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 what am I going to get it in? I'm like, you're, you, you're finishing early today. So you can go to yoga. Remember like, oh yeah. Okay. Calm down. Like, but mm -hmm. it's, it's off for me. If I don't go move my body in the morning, even if it's like 15, 20 minute walk around the neighborhood, like something feels off yep. now. And, and I start to crave it versus sometimes it used to feel like such a chore. You know, I crave not eating certain foods when I'm off eating junk. Like I crave coming home to my ground Turkey and clean salads because not because it so tastes amazing because I know how my body feels after I eat it. I know how I feel the next day after I eat something healthy like that. So the ripple effect of doing the things, you know, that need to get done make so much space in your life for less decision overwhelm, less decision fatigue, all of that kind of shit too. I absolutely love it. And I know that we are, we are, you know, to our listeners, we are talking more like kind of focus on health, but this like also goes for things in business. Like for me right now, oh, yeah. we're growing our general contracting company and I'm diving back into kind of sales and marketing and the sales, like the avoidance of making those calls. And I'm like, Shelly, you know what you need to do? Go do it. Right. And so it, all of these things that Jess and I are talking about are applicable to both business as well as your health. It is the same thing. There is that one email that you're avoiding sending. There is that one report that you're like, I really don't want to look at this. It's super boring. I don't want to do it. Like do it and you will feel amazing afterwards. So use these, these little tips and, you know, pieces of advice that we've shared in both business and health. They are applicable in both. Now, yes. Let's kind of go over because you had mentioned um, a little bit about balance and boundaries. And as you're building a business, because I, I know that we have a lot of entrepreneurs, we have a lot of business owners, and I want even our business owners that are on, on the call, you know, on the podcast right now to like listen in and think about their team with this. 
Because if you have someone on your team that could be maybe pushing back with some boundaries that you're setting or something, we always got to think about everyone else's boundaries, because I think it's important to talk about our boundaries, but also be sensitive, or I guess be aware of how those boundaries maybe, you know, affect someone else. So Mm. as you have been able to build a, you know, build your business and essentially morph into different businesses, right? Learning in the mastermind with Chris Harder, like all of these things, how have you set up boundaries for yourself from a business perspective um, to create the balance that you wanted? Oh my God, this is so good. And I'm actually going to pull up these slides um, right now. I just gave a talk on this yesterday. Can you still see me fine? Yes, I can. Um, Yeah, because I talked all around this yesterday to actually um, a workshop we were hosting for beauty entrepreneurs in the industry. And I asked the lady, like, what would be the best to serve people with based off of the things she knew me for? And so, of course, I think I talk so much about boundaries that I was like, let's talk about creating and setting boundaries, because I think this is such a key piece. And it's something that no matter what you're doing, where you go, it, 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 it is the foundation of what will bring you peace around creating teams or having anything like that. So the first thing is always just to define your priorities because at the end of the day, I'll tell you right now, boundaries are for you, not for them, you know? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. defining your priorities, people can't read your mind. People cannot read your mind. So first determine what's most important in your personal and professional life. And then the second piece is that clear communication. Be transparent and honest with other people. You can do that in a very, you know, positive way, not a very like dictatorship way, clearly communicating, you know, what is acceptable and what isn't. And again, we can say that with love, right? It just helps prevent misunderstandings. And then the third piece I love is getting comfortable saying no. And that's one of the hardest things that people have is to say no to certain things. And that can look very different um, across the board, but if I use client analogies like in the salon. If someone's asking you to come in early or stay later, if you're even in context with, you know, your type of business, you know, saying no to certain people asking for certain things that are not falling within those boundaries. Um, And then, you know, being discerning of like what you're saying no to in your personal life, how is that affecting you when it comes back to your work-life balance? And then the fourth part is always like, you have to make yourself a priority first, because if you're leading teams or if you're growing anything, like if you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup, we know that. So making yourself a priority is the first and foremost piece. That's never selfish. We know this to be true as a mom. We know this to be true as a business owner. We know this to be true. Like even in certain situations with family, right? If you're a people pleaser, which I, I hate that the words gotten a bad rap, but If you're in a service-based industry, you probably love people. So you want to please them. And I don't see anything wrong with that. But when you aren't giving yourself the same amount of, um, you know, priority as you would your clients, the balance is going to feel super off. And then the last piece is just that consistency that we've kind of been Mm -hmm. having through this whole conversation. Boundaries, um, they work best if you're consistent with them. If, If you let people slide with things sometimes and then not other times, they don't trust you. They don't trust that level of trust again, builds confidence and people love, you know, somebody that they can count on. They know, like, even if they don't really love that, that boundary exists, if you're consistent with it, they learn to respect it and and live within that boundary. Same with you doing that for yourself. It just, it establishes really healthy patterns that, you know, if someone comes into the team that's new and that's already like a known thing that that boundary already exists and the whole rest of the team knows like, That new person be like, oh, oh, everyone else seems to be on board with it. So I'll just roll with it too. So I think boundaries and creating those can be one of the biggest pieces to your success, like period, point blank. I love that. And it's funny, as you're as you're sharing this, I have a dear friend who owns a salon and has a big team under her. And it's it's incredible seeing that because when you're in there, you're like, you're in this one space, right? And everybody's moving around. It's kind of like an office, right? You might have like, everyone might have their own office. When I was in a financial advisor, I was in a bullpen. So you could like see everybody. Like it was kind of crazy, but as a leader, right? And creating, you know, not like you said, not only making yourself like a priority, but that clear communication, I think I'm going to dive into a few of these because they're good. They're good. Just <laughs> is that that clear communication, right? Is if you say it, you also have to be it as a leader, yeah. right? So if you're saying no to a certain client for whatever reason, whether you're a stylist or, you know, running a construction company like me, like 
re regardless, you also have to be the no, right? So you can't say no, they can't do that, but then you go do it. So right. I think that it's twofold. It's that clear communication, but it's also that clear demonstration of what you are saying. I think that is so powerful. And I can only imagine like in a salon setting, in a close setting with any team that you're building, that is so important because if you say one, it's like being a mom. If you say one thing and then you do another, your kids are going to be like, yeah, screw you. I'm going to go do what I want, right? Like it's the same thing. And and that's truly a, a, an amazing leadership quality. And the the um, making yourself a priority. Jess, I want you to share, because I've shared. How hard is that? How hard is that for you to do? Like, think back when you were building, first building your business and maybe the transition in like you said, I think 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. How hard was it for you to make yourself a priority when you were making a big career shift? Well, it's interesting because I think when there's moments in our life where maybe we're not going to be top dog, priority. Like maybe you just had a baby or maybe, you know, you're in a new relationship that you want to give priority to that new person in your life, or you started a new job and you really want to make that a priority. Your priorities will evolve and shift. Right. But at the end of the day, you can't let yourself fall by the wayside. Right. We, we all know this. If you, if you're a mom or any kind of parent, like you, you have to pour from your cup. It has to get refilled at a certain level. So sometimes in life, that's going to look like a badass workout and journaling, meditating, eating, right. Having a perfect space, all the things, but we all know first couple of months of being a mom, like it might look like you took a shower. It might look like you got to go to target by yourself for 30 minutes. So again, like find yourself in these things that we're sharing with you. If you're listening and thinking like, Oh yeah, but they don't know we get it. Like we've all been through tough seasons. We've all been through amazing seasons. We've all been in new situations that make you feel some type of way that you can't put yourself first. But, you know, I have a list of things that general habits, I feel like that everyone can kind of incorporate that will support you yourself. Um, mm -hmm. the first one is always prioritizing your health. That's the whole premise of what we've been talking about from the very beginning. And for me, that looks like movement. Again, it doesn't have to be a hardcore workout like it used to be when I was in competitive bodybuilding. It can look like just that walk around the neighborhood for 15 minutes to decompress. You know, it can look like journaling. Maybe you hate journaling, but I challenge you to take a few minutes, whether it's every single day or once a week and sit down and put pen to paper, putting your thoughts onto paper so that you can really start to see like, I'm not well. <laughs> Like I'm pissed this week sucked. Like write that if that's how you feel. And if the week was amazing, acknowledge that because sometimes we skip over the good parts so quickly that we forget they even happened, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could have had an amazing week of sales, but just thought, well, yeah, of course I did. That's what's expected of me. And not even giving yourself the credit that you did the damn thing. I think we discredit so much stuff that we do, especially as women. And I'll just speak to women because I feel like we are way harder on ourselves around this than men. And in, then most people, I, I feel like it's, it's almost like to the detriment of us that we're meant to put everyone else before us, right? Like we're the chosen ones to have humans and birth people. Like it's, it feels unfair sometimes the weight that we can carry or the things that we put on ourselves, but that's where like meditation comes into play for me. I don't do your traditional sit there with my hands on my knees. Meditation for me looks like breath work. I have ADHD. I can't sit still very well. I'm a creative. My brain's constantly flowing. So I need that flow state to happen. And sitting there doesn't really work for me. Um, I can do it at the end of yoga, but again, I just did a yoga practice, right? So it's movie meditation that works for me. Therapy talk therapy works for a lot of people. It did for me for many, many years. Having my podcast has become my talk therapy in a sense. Now getting to share and, and, have perspective shifts daily with amazing guests that I get to interview, having a space to like speak my mind on a podcast has changed my life dramatically. I can write things, but I can also speak them. It's, it's so powerful. Um, obviously eating healthy food. We're all still in category one and then positive propaganda. And I talked about the, your environment earlier, mm -hmm. the, the shit that you listen to, the things that you watch on TV, the news that you ingest, the things you let people speak in front of you about that is your choice and keeping things that are really ne negative away from you. Like Sure, we need to know what's going on into the to the world to a certain extent. But do you need to know this week? Do you need to know all of that? Like while you're in maybe your season of challenge or hard or your new mom phase, do you really want to go down the rabbit hole of all the things that could go wrong with your baby? No. Like fill your life with positive propaganda that's going to pour belief into you, not take away from that. 
So the second piece is maintaining a clean space. I feel like I'm someone who's a little disheveled and a, a bit disorganized when it comes to stuff. I like organized chaos, but I've learned that if I can keep my space clean and organized, it calms my mind when I walk into a room. There's nothing better than I love like a freshly made bed or the cushions on the couch being just right or a cleaned up kitchen when I get home from a long day. Like, you know, if you know, you know, like that is something that you can definitely automate or delegate out to other people if that's not your jam for sure. And the third piece I'll just leave you with is like the self-work. We just mentioned two books on this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast, this is part of that self-work, that evolution of expanding your mind to help you grow. Right. So I feel like, like I said, reading books has been huge for me. And I, I realized I fell off a couple of years ago from reading books because I just wasn't giving myself the time to do it. And it actually was really hard for me to get through like the first few pages. And now I'm getting through a book at least a month, sometimes two. So find things that interest you or that get you excited or make you want to connect deeper to whatever you're reading. Again, going back to what are your priorities? What is going to help support you in this season of your life? Listening to podcasts, I'm always a huge fan of those because I can do those in a flow state. I can clean the house. I can drive my car. I can go for a walk. Um, and I can attune the podcast to whatever mood or need I'm feeling. Do I need mm -hmm. uplifting? Do I need someone to slap me back in a sense of, do I need a hype girl podcast? Do I want to learn something today? So I have a few that I love that I know I can go and get what I need from. And I don't have to like call anybody. I don't have have to like have a gossip sesh if I'm feeling like shit. I don't need to talk about it. I just need to go get my quick fix of what's going to make me feel better in that moment so I can keep doing the things I know I need to be doing. I love going to retreats and masterminds. You and I went to a dinner the other night where it was kind of like a networking brunch. Like that kind of shit is always awkward and weird. And you're always like talking to yourself out of it at the last minute, even though you're excited. It's such a weird thing. It never changes. So if you are putting yourself in new rooms, just know like that's normal. We all feel the same way. Um, networking is one of my favorite ways to like grow and expand and support myself because we don't want to feel like we're alone. And when you don't feel alone, it feels less hard for some reason. And then joining calls um, or support groups, or maybe people that have memberships that you want to be a part of just being around like-minded people is going to give you that support to keep going and showing up for yourself. I love that. And you know, there's a few that resonated with me and I literally just shared this on a story yesterday. I might make a reel about it. Just like you are what you listen to. And so it, it was funny. Um, we actually had Montel Jordan at my church on Sunday. Yes. Montel Jordan, the, the singer and the R and B artist. And he, um, just shared just such a great sermon, but I had missed it. I listened to it Monday morning while I was on the treadmill and then getting ready. And I'm like, this is like, I felt like I could take on the day because mm -hmm. I filled my brain, my ears as not only as I'm edu like, uh, exercising, taking care of myself, I am listening to things that are going to serve me, right? Not bring me down. And this is one thing I will share. Like there, there has been a lot of change in my life over the last year. And when I was going out, if you know, I follow, I have horses and I was going out to take care of my horses at night and my brain, what used to be like a very peaceful, almost meditative thing for me to do was take care of my horses had turned into this negative spiral. And I needed help because I couldn't get out of it myself. So what I had to do is I had to actually put in my, my, uh, ear pods and listen to a sermon, listen to an uplifting podcast that kept my mind focused on what I wanted to do and not let it go into this negative spiral. It like, it changed everything. It didn't happen overnight. Everyone listening in, like it was freaking hard, but I recognized this activity was bringing me down, which it used to be a space that was very safe and very like kind and calm for me, right? Being with my horses. And then it went into this negative space and I needed help. I reached to podcasts to be able to bring me out of that. And so it is so powerful what, what you listen to, what you ingest, what you read, um, and what you say, how you speak about yourself, how you speak about others, your activities, your family, what we ingest and what we speak about can either make or break the results on your activities, both in business and in health, in relationships, in love, in, in all of it. And yeah. so, you know, I think Jess and I kind of have that same message that it is so important that you guard that you be very selective in what you do. And 
just like Jess, I have certain podcasts, right. That I want to like, listen to, I'm redoing my site right now. I'm going to kind of put my favorite ones on there because sometimes you need that kick in the butt. And sometimes you need that hype girl. And sometimes I just love learning. So I am using those different podcasts to be able to do that. So since, since we're talking about podcasts, Jess, I want to dive into this topic because obviously we're on a podcast right now. I ran a live podcast that was in the equine industry over the last several years before launching this podcast. Um, and I just know that you obviously believe in the power of podcasting as well. How, like, when did you launch your podcast? What, how did it come about? Mm, well, so that's a whole story too. Um, so during COVID, I, I had opened a salon six months before the closure and yeah, perfect timing waiting for my 15 year dream to come to fruition. I know, good job. Good I'm job. not, <laughs> I'm clearly not over it yet still. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I'm working through that. And again, like everything is a gift in its own way. Looking back, it makes sense. I still is okay for me to be sad about how it all kind of happened, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. Um, but I had wanted to start a podcast for about two years prior to this point, but I had, I finally was out of excuses. Majority of people, the top two excuses are time and money. I don't have time to do that. I don't have the money to do it. It's usually both. Um, and like anybody, we can usually find the time we need and we can generally find the money we need to do the things we want. Right? Like, look, yep. anyways, that's a whole nother podcast. But, um, <laughs> I sat in my beautiful salon and I was like, it's shit or get off the pot time. Like you have a space. It's gorgeous. I had just got a new client actually during the, the lockdown because of that, uh, who was like a videographer who made really rad videos. And we sat and we chatted about what it would look like to sit down and record a live podcast. And my dream has always been to have a talk show. And I've not like, I want to have some sort of like live talk show where I get to do this kind of stuff live. I'm an in-person person. I love people. I love <laughs> touching people. I love hugs. I love just all the things. Obviously I played with people's hair for 22 years. Um, it's, it's just part of who I am. And I always knew, like I had a calling for the gift. I have the gift of gab. Like you just can't get me to shut up. It is what it is. And now that there's a podcast, like a platform where like, this is socially acceptable <laughs> to have long form <laughs> conversations about all kinds of shit. I was like, D this is for me. Like if this isn't for me, I don't know what is. And again, it still took me two years watching my mentors. Lori started her podcast like three, four years before that. Yeah, but they have a platform. Yeah, but that's her. Yeah, she has a following. People will actually listen to her show. Who am I? I'm nobody. What will people want to hear from me? I only know the beauty industry. That's a bunch of crap. We know as a human, like I don't only know hair. Like I'm also a mom. I'm also a friend. I'm also a daughter. I'm also like all the things. Mm -hmm. And so I finally, like I said, was out of excuses. and. Um, my buddy agreed to do the videos and we, we sat down and we, we were like, listen, what's currently going on. I didn't know the name. I didn't have a premise for what I want to talk about on the show. I was like, my friends in the industry are pissed. We're all sad. We all feel like our whole world has come to a screeching halt. Let me just give a voice to the industry. And so that's where the podcast started from. I didn't have a name. I didn't have anything. I had done networking brunches for the beauty industry prior to that, that were like my in-person networking events that I love to do called the beauty insiders brunches. And I created a whole like brand shop out of it called beauty inspires beauty. And he was like, look, look I got to edit the videos. Like I got to put something on it. Let's just call it beauty inspires beauty, the podcast. And I was like, fine. But I knew in, in the, in the long vision that it wasn't just going to be for hairdressers. I knew the stories we were going to share would resonate far beyond the chair and so on and so forth. But I just leaned into what felt good at that moment. And I let myself stop coming up with excuses about the big picture. Like go back. What's the one thing? Start the freaking podcast. So what if you change it? So what if you change your graphics? So what if you change your messaging? It is what it is. You're going to change. So it's not shocking that your podcast will change with you. It's like your Instagram page. How many different bios have you put? How many different pictures have you put on it? Like mm -hmm. you change, you're changing. Um, so uh, we recorded like the first 30 episodes in person, live video in the salon. And it was amazing. And I sucked. I was terrible, but I'm curious. I love asking questions and I got better and I got more clear and I got better at making my guests feel comfortable. And I started to study how other podcasters interviewed and and I just lean into the fact that like it was challenging and it was new and I made the most of it. And people really started to resonate with like the guests, especially like that was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Like, I love that I got to share my story and people started to get excited about it. And because I was known in the industry a little bit, like it definitely, it took off. And it's funny though, 
because I got to about episode 40, 45, and I started to feel a lot of resistance with it. Salons was back open. Business was back as usual. Um, I had actually sold the salon at that point to a friend of mine and wanted to go all in on podcasting and coaching, but was deathly afraid of like losing that identity of who I was after all those years. It's still, it's still kind of a process. And so I, I was like, what's like, why don't I want to record these podcasts anymore? And I th- think it was because I was evolving again. I had sold the salon. So I was kind of losing that identity of like salon owners helping just people in the industry. I wanted to have a bigger impact. And so I also looked at how I was showing up and what I was doing was I had put some like preconceived notion in my own head that beauty inspires beauty meant feminine and soft and girly and that I couldn't like be myself. And we all know how we feel when we can't be ourselves. We feel like we can't show up. It doesn't feel authentic. And I kind of pulled the curtain back and I was like, what are you not doing that would make you feel more like yourself? And I'm like, well, if you're not speaking your mind clearly. You're not cussing like you like to. Um, you're trying to be too perfect and fit in this little box. But that's not you. Mm-hmm. You've always been a little loud. You've definitely always been crass. You definitely have always had like this edge to your tone about how you want to help people. And like, it's a tough love hype girl. Lean into it. But like, use that as your advantage. Don't try to be like everybody else because bitch, you're not like everybody else clearly. Um, so once I accepted that and like lean into the fact that I was just going to get to be me and this was my show, like I took ownership of the show, like, okay, it, it, everything shifted and it became so much easier after that. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. And it, you know, I think the biggest thing that I hear, um, from other people that are like, oh, I want to start a podcast too you know, this show just launched in January. Like I said, I had a previous one in a different industry focus and it was very niche. This one is like meant definitely more broad, but I myself, even doing this, I, w- I it was supposed to launch in December. And I was like, no, I'm not ready. I don't have enough of this. And then I was like, oh, it's too close to the holidays. And then I was like, oh gosh, now we've got the new year. Can't do it then. And I literally sent my producer a date and I'm like, I don't care how many episodes are in there. I don't, I like, we are launching this day. And it was like, I finally had to get out of my own way, just make it happen. And like, I think that is so powerful. You sharing your story that it's like your space and that you just got started. And then even after you got started, you're like, this isn't right. I'm going to move. It's okay. We Mm -hmm. are not set in stone. When we start rolling, we can change direction. We can create new form. We can do all these things, but it's like recognizing it and taking action with it. So I know podcasting has been so powerful for you. And now you're sharing like the way in which to do this, like starting a podcast, you just shared your story how are you now helping other business owners or other people? It doesn't even have, like, don't you have to be a business owner? Other people to start their podcast. Oh my God. Starting a podcast has changed everything for me. It's like literally like I I've grown into a different human since starting a podcast. And it's funny, like I had a microphone forever. I had sat down with a few different friends and had them like walk me through garage band. How do I do this? Or how do I set this up? I was even asked to be this, this girl's co-host on her podcast, but but then the second that she asked me to like edit something or do something, I was like, oh, I don't think this is the right time for me. I, I can't do this all because I was scared of the tech piece of it. I couldn't figure it out or I wouldn't allow myself to figure it out. It was like this weird block I had that I convinced myself that the tech was the piece that like, if I could just figure that out, then I would be a world class podcaster or something <laughs> crazy like that. It's like the silliest thing. So, you know, through all of this trial and error, through learning, through all of the personal, you know, like push through, I realized that I felt very disempowered as I started the podcast because there was so much I didn't know. Luckily, there was a lot that I didn't know I didn't know. So I was like, I prevailed anyways. But in hindsight, it's like when I look back in the beauty industry, what would have made me successful had I known all this stuff from the very beginning, Mm -hmm. right? So that's where I finally decided to get a podcast mentor and coach myself after I'd already started. And investing in that course and program changed my life and gave me more of an outlook of like, okay, if we just have the the things that we need to get started, it makes things a lot easier. So that's where I was like, I need to create my own podcast course for people who are in the same place, right? We're usually solving a problem when we create something for a past Mm -hmm. version of ourselves. And if you're like me and you are super creative, you have amazing ideas all the time that just flow through you like nobody's business. 
it is sometimes challenging for you to dive into the tech stuff or even want to. You may be able to figure it out, but you just don't have a desire to do it. So my podcast team and I sat down and created the most high level comprehensive podcast course out there. Trust me, I researched all of them and I bought all of them just to see what was in there to make sure I wasn't A, missing anything and B, how could I make mine different and easier for someone to sit down and work through so that they would have more success quicker and with more ease. So that's where Start Your Damn Podcast course came from and why I feel like it it somehow has become like the new thing that I am obsessed with that I need to help other people figure out because I get so many people that say, oh, I've always wanted to start a podcast. And the, the reasons are usually time and money. Like I talked mm -hmm. about, I don't have enough time to do it. I don't have enough money to start it. And it is way simpler than you think. But as humans, we love to freaking overcomplicate stuff. It is just what we do. We are very good at it. And this takes it, all of that out, all of the overwhelm. You get when you buy the course, you get unlimited access to the videos for life. They're yours to keep. And there's worksheets to help you go through all of the steps and processes that I've now done later in my podcast that have helped me get really clear on creating endless amounts of content, being able to interview really, really well, and having a clear, uh, focused, like, brand identity when it comes to the podcast. Because again, you don't have to have a business to have a podcast. Mm -mm. And I, I think personal branding is one of those things that for years has been overlooked as that term. Like people have been doing it inherently on social media for the last 11, 12 years. It just uh, organically and authentically. But for people who are really putting a lot of emphasis around growing their personal brand, I feel like if you can connect your voice and your message through a podcast, it will help deepen that relationship with your brand because people want, want to know, like, and trust you. And how can they get to know you? How can they start to build a relationship with you that doesn't involve you and them having a one-on-one, -on -one, a coaching call or something? Your podcast is like top of funnel. It's creating awareness that you exist and what you're all about. So it gives people free opportunity and actually an invitation to come into your world to see what you're all about. And then they get to discover what do you teach on? What do you talk about? What business do you run? Like, who are you? Do I want to consume more of your shit or do I want to get into your world somehow? So whether you're an influencer, you own a business, you're a coach, whatever it looks like, even if you're a hairdresser, for me, it was amazing. My clients were like, that's so awesome. And even they would start having conversations with me. Oh, I love podcasts. I've always wanted to have a podcast. And I would get great feedback from my clients who weren't in the beauty industry just from listening to that. They're like, we love your perspective and we love your inspiration and all the things. And so it just kept fueling me to keep going with the show, even as I evolved or sometimes didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, and, you know, creating a course, if I can create a course, A, anybody can do it. And B, if you know someone who struggled with this kind of stuff, went out of their way to create a course, you damn well know it's good because it had to make sense for me. And some of this stuff was a little high level as we were working through it. I was like, we need a PDF. We need, a, we need a worksheet with this because like someone like me, who's visual and a creative, I have to work this out. Mm -hmm. You can't just tell me a few steps and then I'm going to be able to integrate and implement it. It doesn't work like that for me. So this is really, really great for creatives. It's also very amazing for people who just need to hear it once. They just want the blueprint. They just want the steps and boom. Um, and it'll help you get out of your own way for sure. I love that. And you know, it's just, so many amazing products, courses, learning opportunities all come from helping that past version of ourself, like you said. Yes. And yeah. the fact that you have, because that creative mind, like you can't, I, I am like a little bit on both because I can dive into analytics. Like I love like medical reports and I love like analytics just from even social media and different things. But the creative side, like occasionally I get super creative and then my brain is going and I'm like, oh my gosh, where do I start? How do I do this? And so the fact that you've been able to create this, not only from your experience, but looking at everything else and you know, the power of podcasting. So, you know, this is going to be great. And so I just think it is so great that you were able to package that up and offer it to anyone out there. I am so excited. Where can they find that? Mm, yeah, just hit me up on Instagram. It's it's a quick link. I, everything's housed in my Mighty Networks app and you get instant access the second you uh, purchase the course. And I'm also offering two one-on-one -on -one calls to go with it right now, um, which in it themselves is the price of the course. So um, you essentially get you know two, 
two free coaching calls to go along with, which you won't even need. You won't need them when it comes to like working through the course. What you will probably need them for is time to ideate with me and figure out like best ways to sit down and record. Um, I love kind of coming up with strategy around that because I feel like if you don't get intentional with when you record, you, like you just said, sometimes I can be creative. You want to put yourself in states where that creativity can really flow because conversation needs to be organic and you know, feel authentic. And I feel like that's a huge piece of why the people that are most successful in the podcast industry thrive because they set themselves up to record on days that it makes the most sense. Um, but yeah, everything's on, on Instagram. You can just click the link in my bio and it'll give you direct access in there. And the course is really fun to go through. And again, like I said, there's worksheets and stuff. Um, I meant to have it be like a, a work with me one week we did each module, but I'm somebody who like, if I get a weekend, like I want to digest the whole thing. So I made it evergreen. It's there for anybody who wants to grab it. Um, you can go through the course in a long weekend. You can sit and binge the whole thing in a day if you want, um, and take immediate action, which I'm a huge fan of. I love inspired, immediate, messy mm. action. So for those of you who are listening and you're like, listen, even if you're not starting your course tomorrow or your podcast tomorrow, this course can help you with so much to wrap your head around. Hey, do I even really want a podcast? Um, and also I'm happy to jump on a call with anybody. You can book a free discovery call with me to see if a podcast is what you should be doing right now. Because as a coach for entrepreneurs, it's something that like I've veered people away from in the season they're currently in, but also push them into as a way to build their business and to develop even deeper relationships with their brand. I love that. I love that. Okay. And just as we kind of close up here, Jess, what an amazing conversation because we can keep going. We could keep going, I but I think we might just need to have like a part two, um, version of this because this has been so good. I love where this conversation was able to flow easily and just be like, Hey, we're here just sharing what we've gone through to be able to help someone else. And here on the business of being healthy, that's what we're all about is sharing that wisdom to be able to save people money, time, and heartache. And you just heard Jess talking about money and time that really drives a lot of decisions. So um, Jess, I just want to say thank you again so very much um, for joining me. And the best place for everyone to find you is Instagram. Is that correct? Yep. Just, just a Jessica Bergio. And then you can follow the podcast at unscripted. The podcast has its own page too. Great. And I'll make sure to link those in the show notes so you guys can grab them and get the links right there. If this podcast made you think not only about yourself, but maybe someone else, and you probably found this by being shared from someone else, and maybe someone told you about it, or you saw it on Instagram, however you found out about it, could you help me in changing someone else's life by sharing this podcast with them? It would mean the absolute world don't forget, if you do share it on social media, tag Jess and I, we will give you all of the love. And um, Jess, again, thank you so much. And we will see you all next time.